Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Obia Jilu Ubo, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing amazing. Good to see you. Yes, I'm excited for tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to boogie down. Yeah, also, so, yeah, yeah, also, yeah, also, yeah. So after the show now, just go um rest a bit, then start getting ready to come out for the event. Um, since uh, I and my twin sister will be <laughs> co-hosting <laughs> <laughs> the event after the show, I'll go and sit down quickly, put yes, some things together, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then head so, home. Looking so forward, that's, yeah. Oh, Mr. Boy is still coming, oh. Yeah. No, this means we have to continue to manage them. But you know the me now. Nah. I don't need managing. I, <laughs> yeah, have I know to. how to blackmail very well. <laughs> I've blackmailed him for the future if he doesn't show up. He's coming. I have been usually support. I, this morning, I guess, Brown, don't forget to, mm. to deal. Yeah. We're we going together. You. Okay. Please do. He said, don't worry, don't worry. Because his friends are coming. Okay. They play together. Yeah. So they don't I'll join Mr. Brown. Mr. I said, yeah. no problem. They will have fun. Let them come and support us. Elijah, Nima, Akashat, Zuberi, how are you? Yeah. I don't have the support of Mr. Zuberi <laughs> to come. Uh -huh. so I'll be on my own. Yes. Uh, I'm used to that. That's yes. how our own house yes. works. Yes. We don't do vows and he doesn't want to do vows, but we're fine. And um, ah, I wanted to banter. So, okay, I wanted to say thank you to, again, to Amawanda Foods and thank Spices. Thank you, Amawanda. So everybody at the event will be getting. Very supportive. And the ladies yeah. are getting the, the big, yeah, I'm trying to remember the grams. For the big bottles, right. so thank you so much. The jumbo, yes, amazing. the jumbo size. Oh, yes. So I didn't bring it. So we're doing that next week, but the guys for next week. For gifts for all the people who subscribe for our Valentine event and Joe mascot for our bags. Thank you. Very thank you, Joe mascot. Uh, thank so you. it's ready gifts. I will get to be Pagzo everybody coming. Yes, Pagzo is also yes. giving us wow. gifts. Wow. Pagzo. So wow. thank you, thank you, thank you. For so all, we're so excited. Yeah, to all of them. Thanks. We will go home with yeah. load today. I'm yeah. so excited about that. I'm excited, Mr. Longa is coming. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I'll do it for you. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Be there. I'm really truly excited, yeah. and I know that everyone who comes will have a lovely time. Mm, and yeah. as you know, this is just like the first step in the many other activities that yes. we have. We have yes. planned lined, up. lined yeah. up until yeah. our 10th anniversary. So come, let's enjoy each other's company. Yeah. And, and, and see, and your view, as as I said, your view is not um, is a show for regular folks. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're for people, the regular Nigerians. And when we do events like this, we just want to have opportunity to sit down with ourselves and tell each other the truth. You know, yeah. learn from each other, share knowledge, see how we can uh, influence each other. I can, I can learn from Obi Ajilu, I can learn from Nima, I can learn from Mariam. YK and others. So the point is that let's come together, have fun. And if you've not um, paid for your ticket, you can still, I think we have a few more tickets yes, left. Thank yeah. you to so Mr. Richard for sponsoring. Mr. Yes. Richard? So he's not he here. Oh, he paid. yes. Yeah. He paid for somebody. Yeah. So we have gifts. We'll be giving yes. out during the so show. So I think I have one free yes. ticket hmm? for, for somebody, a couple. Well, we have yes. so we have So what, I, have a, I have a free ticket for a couple. You send me a message, DM before the end of the show. Mm. I see your DM and I look at the time. The damage you're oh. the couple that are going to get it for free. Yeah, so, cool. thanks we'll to Mr. Richard. Day. Thanks to Mr. Richard. There's a time. There's the 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 time. The time. Between now yeah. and when does it end? 11 o'clock. Yes. Between now and 11 o'clock, I'll see who, who sends you, me, Mariah, a DM. Then I'll, I'll be the couple that will get it. Okay, let's go on a break. When we return, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Naira Buhari under attack for flouting Supreme Court's ruling. Ibadan stands still for Tinumbu as Oya will vote equity, justice, Makinetel's APC candidate. Window of settlement between G5 article closed, says Wiki. Bayelsa to get looted $954.8 million. Buhari in Addis Ababa for OAU summit. And survey projects to Nubu to win presidential poll. Okay, quite a lot of editorials here in, in, in Nation, but let me start with the major headline. Who has that story? What's the major the headline? Buhari under attack for flouting to win Yes, Nubu. so the Lagos State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mr. Moyo Shori Unigbanjo, SAN, has reacted to President Muhammadu Buhari's rejection of the old note, saying it's contrary to the Supreme Court's judgment. Uh, he said that um, he said this when he appeared on TVC Business Show, and he said petrol stations, banks, and others who reject the Naira notes will be prosecuted. He also uh, talked about the fact that the scarcity in the land 
is being um, because of the fact that um, the POS, uh, you know, uh, businessmen are the ones who are putting this untold hardship on Nigerians, and the people are going to be buying their own naira. That it doesn't make sense at all. It's a people who are hungry, have no means of livelihood, cannot care about anything called macroeconomic policy or a short or long term gain. And he also mentioned that there's a contract between a customer and a bank that says when you bring your money to us, you have your money back on demand. And any bank who refuses to give the money on demand has violated that contract and can be sued. And so he's advising negotiants who have, you know, been affected by some of this to take the banks to court because there's an agreement that once I give you my money, I should have my money when I need it. <laughs> then... Um, we went ahead to talk about some states who are already giving out palliatives, like uh, I think uh, Boronu State, they are releasing about 300 million medical supplies to different hospitals so that they can take care of people who cannot afford it. And they are appealing, if you know you can afford it, please don't hide your money mm. and say you cannot afford it so yeah. that it's enough for those people who need it. Yeah. I think in KB State, they are distributing food through the local government, rice, maize, millet, and all that. In Edo State, they've given until the 20th of um, February, free transportation. The government has said that you have, people should have free transportation, just a way yeah. to cushion the, yeah, the effects, effects of, of what's happening. Yeah. There's an auditorial that I think I should read in connection to this. So the editorial doesn't have a name of who was a commentary. It says, the Supreme Court tells the nation what the, gun no the ground norm says. So when anyone, including the president, issues an order or endangers an action that runs counter to it, it's a recipe for anarchy, it subordinates the constitution to the whims and calculations of a man or a group of people. It means the society has veered from democracy to autocracy. And I think we, we echoed that yesterday when we were having that conversation. That we, are we really running democracy? democracy? Okay, let's take another story okay, in the nation. So I have well, um, the US signs an agreement um, signed on behalf of Nigeria by the Solicitor General and the PAMSEC of the Federal Ministry of Justice to repatriate $954,807. Back to the country, which are part of the loot of um, the former governor, late uh, Alamisia. Okay, less, less than a million dollars. Oh, Balisa, yes, million it's dollars. less than a million. So it says it's part of the forfeitures that have been happening um, as regards this estate. <sighs> and Mrs. Uh, Jedi Agba, who is the Solicitor General, also said that the president has directed that that fund should be directed towards building health facilities in Bayelsa, who own the state. So we're not in that Delta category where Delta people and the, the federal government were arguing who owns the funds. This one has already been directed to go back to the uh, BIOSA state. Yeah. So my own story is just an itinerary of what our president will be up to in a couple of days. Um, he departed Abuja for Addis Ababa um, yesterday, and um, he went there to participate in the 36th ordinary session of the Assembly of the African Union. And he says while he's there, he'll be participating in three high-level meetings on peace and security, climate change, and political situation in some of the West African countries. The punch. Better days aren't coming. A despair, disappointment after Major General Buhari's retire as address. Police hand over illegal arms and ammunition to NSA. Lagos soldier killed by policeman buried. Niger's oil output rises by 31 million barrels, says OPEC. Economic crisis man says job losses likely. A narrow redesigned plot to scuttle elections in store interim government, says El Rufai. Which story are we starting with? I'll start with the picture story. So ahead of the general elections, the Nigerian police force on Thursday handed over a total of 6,338 illegal arms and ammunition recovered from criminals and non-state act, non actors across the country. And they handed this over to the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons which is domiciled in the office of the National Security Advisor. Mm. Um, and also through the report, so that we don't waste any time, they gave a um, specific number of what, is, uh, what falls under the arms, the different number that falls under assorted calibers of ammunition, and so on and so forth. And then the National Coordinator, um, NCCSALW, hmm. Major General A.M. Diko, retired, noted that some of the ammunition will be given back to the police to strengthen its capacity to protect citizens. Yeah. So the human interest story, a soldier who was reportedly stabbed to death by a policeman around um, Udogunyo area in Ikorudu, Lagos, mm -hmm. on Wednesday, has been buried. He said his soldier was attached to the 174 Battalion of the Nigerian Army and was identified as Corporal Sahid Ogulowo. 
So they said, ac according to the story, that he was stabbed by, to death by a police corporal around the bus stop during a disagreement. So apparently he had come out to ask. He saw the police officer standing by, beside his vehicle and he was asking him questions. They said the police officer didn't look well dressed. So he wanted to know exactly uh, who he was and where he was from to be sure that he was actually a police officer. And then they got into a disagreement and he was stabbed to death. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the story as well, they said some soldiers came back for a reprisal, a bond, uh, some vehicles in the police station and others. But the army responded to say that it's not the soldiers that did that, that it was the mob that saw what happened and took advantage to start, you know, burning things. But uh, they have visited, the commissioner had visited the uh, widow in the, um, was their barrack and also assured that they would uh, take care of her. So that so was rest in peace, yeah. This unrest happening across the country. <laughs> yeah. The president went ahead when he could have just hidden behind the Supreme Court and yeah. let rule of law guide. Mm. Went ahead and declared for that. All right, was... So the Kaduna State yeah. Governor Nasir El Rufai on Thursday described the current scarcity of notes in the country as a plot, an alleged plot to disrupt the forthcoming elections and ensure an interim government. According to them, many the, um, those who are advising the president were trying to run, um, were hoping to get the uh, the ticket for the APC or yes. be picked as vice president. And because they did not get that, they have convinced the president that it's okay for Nigerians to starve and businesses to have lack of cash just in order to ensure that the APC um, presidential aspirant doesn't, um, the flag bearer of the APC doesn't win. He said once Ashiwaju emerges as a candidate for the June, June 27 primaries, subsequently they were upset because they did not, he did not pick one of them as a running mate. This currency design was conceived to ensure that the APC presidential candidate is deprived of what they say allegedly humongous watches. So they assume that he has plenty of money somewhere. Wow. He wants to use for elections. Anyway, so, I mean, that was quite, um, um, very, very, I mean, I don't even know what to describe Bold. it. Bold, Bold, I would say. Bold, especially because the president had just given his speech and they have a Kaduna State governor addressing his people and Nigeria by saying and that this is, this is a, a direct affront on This is the governor APC who has continually said there. that, you know, I know the president. It's the people around him I don't know. I, I'm sure of who the president, you know, and it's coming out now. Well, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria <coughs> have released their quarterly index, the CEO's Confidence Index, which is a quarterly research and advocacy publication that they have, and they, they are predicting job losses in the year 2023. They said that based on the research that they have done in, 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 towards the last quarter of 2022 into the first quarter of 2023, there will continue to be um, a dip <coughs> below benchmark point to 48.8 points in the first quarter of 2023. And... Um, a down, downward spiral from of 49.2 points obtained in the preceding from, uh, obtained in the preceding year. So they are predicting that you know businesses will have to downsize, people will lose jobs because we are going to adjust to this new right. hardship and scarcity of naira notes and uh, for Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Shock, anger, greets Buhari's approval of the old 200 notes. Insecurity, Ohaneze to hold peace summit invites Kanu and Ekpa. U.S. returns $954,000 Alamisia loot, fierce possible protests during elections. Security agencies to deploy 400,000 operatives for the presidential poll. NECA urges defaulting states to pay up 3 billion naira debt releases, 2022 um, SSCE results. It's too late for G5 to reconcile with PDP, says UK. UK cautions over spike in criminal activity at bank, ATN's financial institutions beef up security <coughs> and stop crying foul. We did touch naira to Nigerians, PDP tells ABC leaders. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let me, let me start with the UK. So the UK, United Kingdom, foreign... Commonwealth and Development Office has issued travel advisory to their people. They have said, okay, those of you here, please be careful. Nigeria is mainly a cash economy, and although they use the credit and debit cards, 
um, is increasing, but you know, in big cities, that's only where you can use that. If you tend to use cash, make sure you bring enough foreign currency for that cash. Mm -hmm. So you are not even bothering to exchange, you just pay in your own. It's illegal to change money on the streets. They also want that credit card for this common here. So be careful when you remove your card to use. They then went for that so that they have been the redesign of our notes and their shortages and they are likely to persist. This is likely to persist for a while. So there's a, a tension around ATM areas, banks. So you should be they are, they are citizens in our country. You should be careful how they use the ATMs to get cash and all of that. They don't talk anything different. It's the truth of what is in our country, but they are wanting. Yeah, they see they still card for their own place. Eh? Yeah. They go there too. They know, but they are not fighting. But they are not saying anything. Please, we hear. Let's focus. But they are supposed to help warn their people now. That's yeah. what the good government is doing. Anyways, our River State Governor, um, Yes Wiki, has said that the G5 group governors, um, who he also calls the Integrity Group, have crossed. They've reached the point of no return no when return. it comes to reconciliation. That all these small, small talks of maybe they're still going to sit down and reconcile, that there's no reconciliation, and that it's untrue to say that they all are going their separate ways or doing different things. That they are all, you know, they all believe in the value that brought them together. Right. And so um, there's nothing about them ever reconciling. He says um, concerning um, PDP, um, the presidential rally that was supposed to hold in River State. He said, don't mind them. They collected money and they were unable to even muster people to come for the rally. And then they came up with such an outlandish story. To, uh, and in, in, <laughs> they came up with a story saying that there was insecurity in River yes. State because they could not bring people together. He also said that um, he has no apology for, um, for his... Um, for hosting the APC presidential candidate and, you know, his people. And he also talked about uh, the president and his response and his speech concerning the illegalization of the 1,500 naira notes in spite of the Supreme Court's order. And he said that the president ideally should be the epitome of the rule of law. Regrettably, um, he steps, he's taking steps to undermine the integrity of the Supreme Court. So it looks like it's just criticism to the president from all quarters. So, okay. uh, Council of Elders of Ahanez Ndibo um, making efforts for the leader of IPOB, Namdi Kane, to be released to attend the peace summit that it's organizing so that it can resolve security challenges and talk about the seat as home order by some pro Biafra group. They are also inviting to the summit the Finland based Biafra agitator Simon Epa and other leader of PO, uh, pro Biafra group, as well as Igbo stakeholders. So the Chairman Council of the Elders of the uh, Ohanes Ndibo, Emmanuel Iwanya, was talking about this yesterday, and he said the summit will pave a way for a smooth election in the zone. They've been hearing uh, lots of people saying that elections will not hold in Igbo land, and this is very, very unfair because they are trying as much as possible to make sure that election holds. If election doesn't hold, that means Igbo people do not have any say on who governs them. So they must make sure that everybody comes out to vote. They are also trying to ensure that the five governors of the Southeast participate in the summit so that they can all talk to their people. The uh, IPOB is saying that they are going to support and ensure that election will hold. But there are other factions who are trying to insist on this seat at home, mm, yes. uh, boycott election and all that. So they want to use this peace summit to sort that out. Fantastic. Let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Nara Policy Broadcast. Speaker, NBF Afeniferi, IPAC, others false Buhari. Tinumbu in Ibadan presents APC flag to Fularin, lead APC chieftains to Makinde and meet Obas. Um, court stops PDP from expelling our Tom. Retired generals, losers of APC gubernatorial presidential primaries want interim government, says El Rufai. Oh, I take that story. You've taken it, yeah. yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that story I will not taken. <clears throat> I will not take in. Uh, okay, let's move on quickly to the Vanguard. Okay, taking more story. Again, Naira policy gets saboteurs arrested, tried. Wari tells CBN. PDP to APC leaders release hoarded Naira notes. Polls reject candidates with questionable traits. It's Catholic Bishop. Polls. Why Southeast must produce the next president, says Okunrumu, ex Ferry. Suspected meningitis outbreak kills 38 in Jigawa. And over 57% make credit in, in English, math as NECO releases 2022 results. Okay, let me take the uh, no fewer than 38 persons uh, suspected to 
have died from cerebrospinal meningitis in Jigawa State. Um, Dr. Salis Umaazu, that's the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, told um, newsmen in Dutay yesterday. They said that also they have a total of 398 suspected cases, and this has been between October 2022 till date. Um, they said that they had detected this disease in 56 of their wards across seven local governments, especially the areas of the state that bordered the Niger Republic. He says when the um, outbreak was initially um, noticed, it was along the neighboring Niger Republic areas, those community, the border communities along that area, but it has spread and, you know, they listed the different areas that have been affected by this. Um, I know that in Nigeria, we get this nearly every year where uh, meningitis is something that just, <laughs> you know, many communities um, go through. And I'm just hoping that eventually, somehow, we're able to do something about this quickly. <coughs> and as you know, they said um, the CMS disease is commonly, which is the type A. This one, we discovered that it is bacteria known as type B. So it is a little bit different. And um, the state government and Ministry of Health will swing into action to make sure, you know, people don't die further from this. Right. Okay, so um, the National Examination Council, NECO, has announced that the um, results of exams for November, December 2022 is out. <coughs> and um, that, you know, 59,000 um, students sat for that exam. 59,124 students sat for the exams. And about 31,000 316 of all that number was were males, and the performance was um, um, good. 76.13 percent got credits and above in English language and other subjects, while um, for mathematics, 57,700 um, out of the 43,000 passed uh, got credits and above in maths. Right. So they they commend the result. They are also in the same vein asking. State governments who are owing for the past years three billion, to pay up pay. what they are owing NECO, mm -hmm. and I, I wonder how <laughs> NECO would survive if the states continue to declare free education for exams and not pay. Okay, yeah, so yeah. That three billion is huge. All right, that's all we can take on front page review. We're hearing that some violence have broken out in Lagos and Ojota. So we'll be having the Lagos State Police Public Relations Officer, SP Benjamin Hudain, to speak to us on the updates in Lagos State. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. While we're expecting that... Um, we get the police public relations officer, um, SP Benjamin Houdain, to join us very soon. Uh, we're told that the hotspots are, the boiling pots are Ojota, K2, My12, Agege. And we're going to be getting our fans or our viewers from those areas to call in to let us know exactly uh, what they've seen or heard in their neighborhoods. Uh, but the situation right now appears to be calm, as we've seen that police has gone there to restore um, calmness in the communities. However, we're not sure if there were injuries or they, if, if there were likely deaths. Well, we, once we get in the SP, uh, Benjamin Houdain, to tell us, give us an update, we'll know ex exactly what happened. But in the meantime, call the numbers on your screen, 081-270-53687. And also <laughs> tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Let's hear your observations in your neighborhood. Especially if we, we, we observe that and this week, we've had similar riots in Edo, we've had in Ilori, we have in Ibadan, we had in other states across the nation where they were burning um, banks, destroying ATMs, putting bonfires out there, causing trouble. And Lagos State definitely doesn't want this. So obviously, we'll, we'll just wait till the CP, um, the SP gets, gets in touch with us. But in the meantime, we'd like to take some phone calls. Um, what have you heard? No, Nima, you were able to avert that this morning when you're coming to work. Tell us what you saw. Okay, so I drove all the way to Ojota. I crossed the bridge at Odoyalaro, and I was inwards Ojota when I saw cars reversing. But because I couldn't find out why they were reversing, on, and some of them turning around and doing it straight one way to me, I tried to go off into the service lane and continued with the journey. 
and then at some point we couldn't go further. We couldn't get to the um, MRS filling station at all. I couldn't even see in front of me. Mm. There was smoke. Mm. And so, fortunately, I saw a car and somebody was able to say to me that the, uh, there's an attack at uh, Jota, that they've been attacking for two, okay. from my 12 inwards. Mm. So we were able to find our way into <coughs> Ogudu. Then to, thanks to one uh, man in a Pontiac who was able to direct me right. towards Ogudu and then we were able okay, to find Let me pause you for out. a second because I'm told that SP Benjamin Hoden is now on the phone. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. So we heard that there were hot spots this morning, people protesting and um, causing some kind of a, um, mayhem around the um, Ojota, my 12, and uh, K2 area. Could you give us an update on exactly what you've seen or heard so far? Well, um, people came out from from the uh, roads, make on fire, and up. Momentary got wind of that. So um, the situation was brought on that. The over on um the it's a bit hard to hear you. It's a bit muffled. I can't, I can't make out what you're saying. Hello, can you get me? It's a bit muffled. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I said no matter how you saw all the okay. roads that were blown that have been uh, cleared. Okay. And um, we are still on ground to monitor the situation and make sure there is no further breakdown of law and all that. Mm. Okay, well, can you say what exactly started the, uh, the arrest? What exactly was it about this morning? Did you make well, any arrest that, also? Um, yes, to, that that um, yes to ascertain. Um, rumors are flying around that so it's because of the cash policy, but I cannot confirm that yet. Okay. I'm looking into that. But what I can confirm is that normality has been restored. And talking about arrest, no, no arrest has been made yet, but we are on ground to make sure there's no further problem of law. Were there any casualties or was just the bonfires you saw? No, no, we don't have any um, reports of casualties. Oh, fantastic. As we speak, uh, people just um, block the roads to express grievances for what now I'm yet to ascertain. Okay. Uh, but uh, no cause of casualties. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll let you go at this time. Um, we just wanted to get an update from you to be sure. I'm happy that normalcy has been restored and that um, so far no reports of any casualties um, have been um, reported. Thank you very much, SP Benjamin Houdain, for joining us this morning. We appreciate your confirmation. All right, so let's go on a break. I mean, I mean this is really sad. We don't know the reason, as he said, but we can't, we, some of you have, some have assumed, or we have assumed that it's because of the cash crunch. I mean, all the states have had this, and this is like a, a copy of other states. So when you see other states doing something like that, many of these um, boys also take to the streets and saying, thinking that they can also make Good their grievances know mm -hmm. through these means. But we also saw pictures of the crowd in front of CBN. This morning, I just saw that video right yeah, now. There's yeah. a huge crowd trying to yeah. deposit the best card because today is the last day, according mm. to the president. But according to the Supreme Court, there's no last day. So that is still debatable, but we'll see how that goes. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll discuss our topic for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So it's our Celebrity Friday gist. So the celebrity that is trending today is Mercy Aigwe, and she's trending because she's on vacation with her husband, and um, there was a comment by her husband's first wife who said that this would have been their 20th year anniversary if they had still been together, they would have celebrated it together. She was in, on vacation at the Maldives, uh, and she was also showing on Instagram um, dinner movie at the Jungle Private Cinema, Floating breakfast, dinner by the beachside, relaxing with champagne in the jacuzzi, kayaking, amongst many other things. And people thought, like, ah, this over peppered them now. Why are you over peppering the first wife? That this would have been the first wife's 20th anniversary. Why are you doing all this wahala? Others are saying, why doesn't everybody mind their business? Um, they're saying, 
Well, it's her own university. She's an adult. If she chooses to, to spend time with her husband, whose business is it? But on the flip side, people are thinking, well, even if it's your husband, know that there was somebody there before. And, you know, you don't want to over them so that she doesn't feel too bad about <laughs> the relationship. That's the conversation. What do you think about this? You can call us on 081-270-53687. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweet. So I don't know why everybody was going on and on about Mercia Igbe traveling. Because I thought it was really fun for her to travel to the Maldives. I saw the pictures. Mm. It even occurred to me about there was somebody else onto that post. Okay. Where this lady now said, oh, it should have been our 20th year anniversary. So you, cannot, you, you, you try to understand where she's coming from. But what are your thoughts on the vacation? Was it wrong for her to go on a vacation that her husband wanted her to go for? <laughs> Who likes to go first, Mariam? Okay. I don't think there was anything wrong with a wife going on vacation with her husband. Right. And, you know, as it is, as is the practice now, we put everything on social media to celebrate it, to thank God for it. And, and as you said, even for me, I just thought, when I saw some of the pictures, I just thought, oh, really nice, interesting, yeah. you know? And I didn't think about the first wife. And I think the conversation that people are having now and talking about, oh, if this was her 20th anniversary and you are the second wife, maybe you really did not put her into consideration. Now, I'm not talking to the second wife, I'm talking to the husband that married the first wife. If he didn't, he remember that it was also their 20th anniversary and then, you know, say to the second wife, can we all do it, three of us together? Or let me do the first, spend time with the first wife now and then we'll go ahead with our own holiday later. And for me, I think what is more, what is the, of concern is the insincerity of polygamy mm. um, or what we call polygamy. So there is one way that we look at it where we have always where we're told like theoretically it's supposed to be when a man equally shows attention love whatever to all the wives involved mm. but in practice is that how it is is it really about equally sharing there love fairness? and attention is there fairness <clears throat> and obviously there isn't so when a lot of people so for me, the conversation is when women say, oh, I don't want a polygamist, and they say, well, your father was or your grandfather was, what they are saying is that there's an unfairness. Yes, it may seem, on paper, it may seem like a good thing. This is what we've always done, uh, makes a, a, a bigger family, and then we all celebrate together. But in practice, mm. people are not always happy. Right. So for me, this is not a, it does not look to me like a polygamy. It looks to me like a woman who has been, who has been sidelined in her marriage, but has been asked, you know, but, you know, you now put a, a banner of polygamy on top. So she cannot go out and make too much noise because they will now use that polygamy card mm -hmm. on her and say, mm -hmm. after all, there's so many before you. Maybe even right. her father was a polygamist. Right. And that is why there's another celebrity couple where the man has said, I have brought in a second wife. And we can see her constantly <coughs> saying, I would never be part of this situation that you have created because when you and I got married that was not what you promised me mm. and now you have brought someone and you are trying to color it as a polygamy situation and okay it it, it makes sense that she's insisting on that now because there truly yeah. is a, an unfairness that happens first of all there's a betrayal that makes it possible for there to be a polygamy when you have not given that as when that was not your initial agreement and then in the implementation and daily living in okay. that sort of situation, right. there's no fairness. Let me come to you, BC. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree that um, Mercy was being unfair by showing her vacation with her own husband? Mm. So uh, for me, I believe there's what they call planned polygamy, uh, where you have a conversation from the beginning to say, OK, I'm entitled to marry as many as I want. You that are coming in, are you ready that Maybe after some time, I will pick a second wife, I'll pick a third, I'll pick a fourth. And you have like an agreement. Okay, I know my husband will be a polygamist. I'm the mm -hmm. first. Thank you for picking me as the first. But I will welcome any other person who comes. And then before the person comes, you must have highlighted or, you know. Rules of engagement. Yes, you've told your wife that I'm interested in this person. I would like to bring her home. Your wife buys into bringing that woman home and that was how it was practiced in our father's days where it's even the wife like in my culture is the wife that we even go and bring the woman home it's planned this so in that one there's this um 
right or wrong that is usually instituted because the man tries as much as possible to ensure that everybody is treated equally. They had planned it from the beginning and they have decided how they want to share the love. 10, 10%, 20, 20%. If it's not your day, I will not come into your bedroom. If it's not your time to cook, you will not cook for me. You know, it's planned. Then if this happens in such a planned situation, and unfortunately it doesn't happen, you can say she was not okay or she was, she was not right to have flaunted it. But this is not, for me, this is not polygamy. This is a matter of somebody sidelining you and pushing you aside. And I will not blame Messi for having her vacation and posting on social media. She's living her life. I would blame the man who knows that there's a first person somewhere there who is supposed to be having a 20th anniversary and you didn't put her into consideration. So the way <clears throat> Messi entered the whole thing, it was not planned. So her looking out for the woman, except of course she's just an angel. Because some women will get in there and feel, okay, don't treat, let me give you this much, it's small. <laughs> so there was a time a customer came to buy something for me. And he wanted to buy for his wife as well. But then he came with somebody that me, I was suspecting they had something. Because the pet names he was using to the call the person. her, I just knew <coughs> something was this happening. Man. So I put out my finest head. And I said, okay, pick this for madam. He said, no, no, madam will not like it. Madam will not like it. And he was asking the other babe, help me select for madam. I was like, so I felt she was not interested. So when it was not her time, so the guy just picked bang, bang, bang for madam. Madam in the house. When it was now her time. The most expensive. My finest hairs. Three. Hey. Silky, straight, <laughs> bone straight. You <laughs> submitted the one for straight. herself. Yes, well. What hundreds of thousands she picked three cup and it was paining me because I was actually pushing this guy to pick this for Madame. For no, Madame. No, Madame no. And she picked for herself. And that's the selfishness of women. Mm -hmm. That's why they say women, all these women supporting women, we are not supportive <laughs> of ourselves. We don't like ourselves. We look for every opportunity to bring ourselves down. If she's, she had like a kind heart to say, oh, okay, this is actually your Eh, okay, even if we have to go, I'll do it on the low key so that she doesn't feel that bad. But it takes an angel to do that. And most women are not angels. So I will not blame her. If you, the man, cannot say, this is my first, this is our 20th, I want to celebrate her, we can do your own later, mm. who am I to blame a girl that's enjoying herself? Okay. Man, Nima, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I me, as I said, sweet. when I saw the vacation, I was really thrilled for her. Because like, I, 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 one, one thing I admire about Mercy is that she found love. That listen, it's always fine. To, it's always good to find love when, when, when you're down and out and you feel things are down, and then you find somebody who you connect with. So I was happy that she's happy, but the truth is that in that happiness, somebody is also hurting. Mm. You know, so you now think, mm. okay, how do we therefore look at this 360 and say? Mm. Do we care for, okay, the first wife, the family, the children involved? Remember, the man also has children. Mm. Who also expect that daddy is also caring for my mom. So what are, what are your perspectives? Especially, this is your area, polygamy matters. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, yes, my area. So, area. I'm in the monogamy. Yeah. I, don't have a, I don't have two, three. But you know, I had said earlier when we talked about Mrs. new marriage that you know, she's not carrying herself the way she should. You know, she's not being a Muslim... The least she can have is empathy. Mm. With that, every other thing will fall in place. She has to be kind, and she's not. When you know, when the second wife comes and they tell you, no, it's because the first wife did not have children. Mm. Ah, no, it's because she's not well educated. You come in and think, oh no, I have a strength over her, yeah. and that's you can't be happy over somebody else's pain. Mm. It's just time that is waiting. Mm. You need to come in three sixty karma. You come your own. Our mothers, from our mothers, from our mother's time in the olden days, there are plenty of stories you can learn from if you're if you're here at the ground. But if you're enjoying the moment, enjoy the moment. Hey, what, what if, what if women of today just prefer to enjoy the moment? You know, hey. a lot of women don't think of the future. They're like, it you doesn't know what? balance. I'm things. happy today. It I'm doesn't okay. balance. I have my own and I'm fine. Hats is a complicated case. So mm. he is married, has kids. She has is married. She's been married. She has kids. They're coming in with two kids. So there's an existing family. Yeah. What is the best thing to do? And you have to be deliberate. The best thing to do is make sure that that family is united because of you. Mm. You are the force in the center. If it is her 20th anniversary and you have booked your ticket, sensitivity. Ah, it's a, let her be the one to say, I am not going. Mm. Maybe she doesn't know. 
I wish she'd come, can know how do I know where you see your own wedding anniversary? Yeah, if the man is not telling her, how will she know? Do you, know, know you see, you see, me, I cannot <laughs> know man. your wedding anniversary. I wasn't at the venue. Uh -huh. that was, are we married to the same husband? Uh -huh. Well, if somebody is married to Zibri today, has to, the person has to know my wedding anniversary. So, how will the conversation come up? Exactly. So when how? you not 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 necessarily a conversation between you and her, as if you're setting out no, the even rules. Even with the man, I'm just wondering. So you're sensitive. You'll be like, ah, so how you do you guys meet? Maybe if even it as was single our girls. Own anniversary, I'd be like, oh, it's our first year anniversary. How when what is your your own? <laughs> so you are the one who notes it. Okay, even in my own monogamy, for instance, fault. I get my birthday, my husband's gifts right, because I'm listening on the conversation. Ah, this is so. Yeah, this is one thing that. I have the intention. I, I would have loved this thing, but I'm going to do it now. I'm going to shift it. I know what to give you next. Ah, uh, no, 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 something. Let me sacrifice this thing for now. I know what to give you next. I know the dates. I know the important. The, I know. I'm listening right. to you. You're talking because your of own. Your kind of I'm nothing. Trust it's me. Down. I will not even remember. You know, if you forget your husband, baby. No, no, no. no. We are just yeah. giving example. No, if my second wife so comes, if it is your, if it is something, I will not no. remember to be asking. If, if you don't tell me see, that, okay, this is it, oh. Yeah. It's not your nature, but if you're deliberate about making that place home for this first for person. yourself, uh, yes, your 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 goal as in a polygamy is not to come in and I displace anybody. Oroguni, mm. yeah, that one says, say you are coming to fight, you are creating war. If your goal is to be in a polygamy in Islam, like the way she has said, though, because suddenly now it's Yahweh Laji. If you want to do polygamy traditional wise, as you are coming, everybody's on their own. Socks, uh, uh, swords sharp, everything, battle Knights ready. ready. You are coming, even your children, you are battling with them, you are eyeing children, you are knocking people's children in the corner. That's traditional. But what if you want are, to do is Islam, you put a lot of things in. Because, polygamous homes see, Moira, let me just learn this. If the man is seen by God to maltreat the first wife. It is sinful for him. There's a Quranic verse where I'm just struggling to remember now. There, that's what they say. That balance must happen. In provision and time. In Islam, it is a sin. And there's a consequence for it in Jannah. In, in the year after, sin. for that man. So you're not going to come into polygamy in Islam with the knowledge of, I just want to mind my business. No polygamy before you practice it. Mm. Don't go and sit in one corner and say, he did not tell me, oh. Mm. It's just as we women, married to men, and we would rather just stay away from our, family. our, fam our, our his family. Maybe there's drama mm -hmm. there. You know what but he would, to break his skin for him, mm -hmm. by forcing him to stay with you, you exposing him to, to, to the wrath of God. He's not forcing so you him, make some effort, man, no. whether or not it's comfortable, mm. to make sure. No, <laughs> they're not forcing, but they're not yeah. dragging. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let me you know, know. So, yeah. you know um, what, you, what Nima has just said has, I think, it's very important in the sense that um, a lot of people just think polygamy is marrying more than one wife. Mm -hmm. It's much more than that. It's, much more. it's also how you intend to live with these wives in such a way that it, not one of the party feels like they are being put aside or yeah. set aside. And so um, we need to be honest. When a man steps out on his marriage, he needs to be honest that I have stepped out on my marriage, not I am a polygamist. The mm. polygamist is saying that mm. I have decided to get another wife and I'm talking to you, the first wife. That person has to be carried along. There's something I've been right. noticing recently with many of the um, household weddings I see now. So a man is getting married to a new wife. Now I see the first wife to come to the reception. Yes. They are part of the reception. They do, I don't know if it's just for social media or for the day, but I feel that it makes you understand I'm coming into this man's family that already has someone there yeah. and so when i come there and realize i'm not the only one whatever i decide to do i have to also put Consider. those people in, into consideration i'm married to a man who used to be married before i'm not he's not a polygamist i'm not in a polygamy but there are some things that i know that he has children before and you know there's a family that has been there before me and so there's some things that i would i would always put them also into consideration it was very important for me, you know, when I was having children, that my own children form a relationship with, the with their elder Thank siblings. It's you. very important. And it would require that I would do some things differently. It would require that I would be more, I would make some compromises. Mm -hmm. It would require that I would be decently behaved towards their mother. Do you understand? I would not come down and say, here I am now. I'm the queen of the manor. Everybody bow mm. down. You know, I would, I, I, I've had to do that. And I feel that, if you know that this marriage is a polygamy, the way it's supposed to be, make sure when you get there, everyone is put into, consider into consideration. But also, the men need to do better. Mm. 
the, you cannot be treating the mother of your children, especially you have a, how are the children supposed to look at this now? Mommy is upset because daddy has not considered her, considered her feeling, considered her to, how does he think that the children would look at him? You can get away, you think you are getting away with a lot of things now because the children are too right. young to say it much or do anything, but they will grow older someday and you will right. be unhappy but you know, about the consequences of what you're doing today. you know also, today. there's a part of this story that we've not discussed. You know, Mercia Igwe is a brand. And many companies, many brands use her and her husband. They like her husband together. So they use them, they send them on these kind of vacations. So many have suggested, and I think Could be. there was a flyer, that is an all-expense-paid trip mm. to the Maldives. So it was, it's like a publicity yeah. for this brand. It wasn't as if the man took out his own personal money to take her on this vacation to slight his first wife. Mm. was because a brand had offered to pay them this, on, the, on this trip. And, and with her demands, passing, no, with Cutty demands, demands that Cutty demands the first wife... Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. I did not be job. Cutty demands that demand. the first wife who would, who's, who has a sensitive date ahead, yes. if they are truly in a polygamy shower, mm -hmm. in case they never, they never yeah. divorced, should be notified. We are doing this for a brand. This will maybe look like a slight, but we intend no insult or slight to your person. And explain to her that your compensation probably is coming after this is done. This is work. Yes, so you so don't think that, uh, no, who, this sorry, is a special person. somebody gives me a job and I'm now thinking, okay, who is, who is this job going to affect if I go on this trip? Is that no, what you're no, saying? No, 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 no. Uh, Do you know, Mariah, even, if we are, not, even, even if it was not a polygamy, mm -hmm. just you and your husband uh -huh. now, and something important is coming up in a few days for and him. And it's his birthday. And you got this job mm. that you have to go for. You will put him into consideration. Won't you explain to him? You would say to him or to whoever it is Thank offering you this, this is an important day coming up for my husband and I. For me, going on this trip with a group of girls or other guys, it would not look well for him. Because you love him, because he's important to you, you will put him into consideration. Mm -hmm. What we are talking now is not about the trip. It's okay to have the trip. It's oh, okay to have the, the trip. All of We're saying that in doing whatever it is you're doing as a polygamist, are you putting all the other people in that party into mm -hmm. consideration? Mm -hmm. It doesn't come across that way. Also, also, so what also makes you think that she was not put into consideration or she was not told? You response. know, sometimes, uh, <laughs> the way life is, you can just wake up on the wrong side of bed and you want to just cause sensation. You just, you are you're not feeling good about it, even though you have been told. Yeah. But you just want to write something. Okay, you're not going to say they have told you. Well, this is how I'm feeling. It's supposed to be my so-so-so time, but these people are away right now. And then we jump on the matter without even knowing if everything has happened. Mm. If you sit them down now, yeah. it's possible that she's aware that this is happening. But the point here and the point everywhere when it comes to this polygamy is that women should begin to take their happiness in their hands. Whether you're married to one man or you're married to... Uh, uh, whether you're married to one man and just in a monogamous relationship or you are in a polygamous relationship, you should understand that nobody owes you happiness. If you don't find it yourself, things mm. will happen in that relationship, planned or point. planned, mm. that will frustrate you. Right. And then you keep expecting people to um, change their plans mm. or do things to make you happy. happy. Take hold of your own happiness. Thank you. I'm going to come back to that point because it's very valid. Um, Ola Dipo, I believe. Thanks for calling. You're there. Yeah, good morning. And good morning. Good morning, man. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I want to say is this. Now, when like a new a new life, a man will want to showcase the new life. So that is what um uh, did. The she found more girl, like you said, and uh, she was a uh, static about this, uh she is enthusiastic about this and she just happy. So it's not a thing on her part displaying the new hand law in the hand of a man. The, 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 the whole blame I put by the doorstep of the husband who couldn't remember a relationship of 20 years that has spanned over 20 years and should to get it in that for a new for a new a new a new home or a new life, which of uh, course is not even sure how that will be. I hope it's going to last. So, a journey of 20 years is not a day's journey that uh, mm. a man shouldn't be cautious of and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. You know, so I'm, I'm getting I'm getting confirmation that actually I won't mention the name of the brand because they're not they didn't pay for this publicity, but it's actually a firm that took her and her husband for that trip, and they're saying that 
the deal was for them to film at the Maldives mm -hmm. and also influence for them. Mm -hmm. They're saying that the, the content was also announced even way before she even traveled in the first place. So why was everybody not focusing on her trip and not the fact that she was doing a job May at I the time? My That's point the conversation. Before yes. The call came in. So um, we need to understand, and this is not just for married couples, but for friendships, for uh, human interactions, mm. that we must learn to limit our expectations or else we continually be in a space where somebody is doing something to you and causing you to feel sad. And that's also not okay for your mental health. So um, you, you are in this particular position right now and it's not happening the way you want. Could you kindly have a silent conversation to find out why it's happening and then deal with it? Move on. What are we talking about? Whatever first they, wife. Yes, first okay. wife, yes. That's one. Deal with it and move on. Understand that, for Christ's sake, I'm not um, trying to point this particular person. Mm. I'm just giving instances. We've had of cases where it was effort that they ate that made them to do what they are doing. Mm. And the man is not in the right senses to even make the proper decision. So I came from a home where a few times my father ate effort too. And he was confused. He abandoned I'm everybody lost. in... F4 now. It was just. Like you were. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying now. They so try let's not no always small, assume small that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Always assume that um, everybody's working in their right um, what if frame this of mind. What man is working in the front? No, no, no. It, uh, there are two scenarios I'm pointing here. It could also be. It's not, I'm not talking about this man before they go and carry me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just giving instances exactly. in cases oh, like this where yeah. there's somebody in the house and then the man follows another person. Yeah. We've heard that they have eaten a fork. Right. And that's why they are following the other. And I'm using my own personal life to say right. a few times growing up too, my father chopped chop. chop at four. Mm -hmm. And we saw the difference in behavior till the thing cleared. Mm -hmm. And he realized himself, this is Africa. These things happen. Mm -hmm. We must put that into consideration. So you as the first wife who sees that things are now changing, you know, they are doing things and doing that. Please find a way, have a conversation and move on. And okay. just leave. Well, we always hear Maybe coaches just, yeah. when they say, I'll come to you tomorrow. They yeah. will, people say that, Find your happiness. You mm. don't do your happiness is not dependent on the next person. Mm. Yeah. So in, in this situation, how does that play out when, when mm. it's in your face? It's true. Find your happiness. But uh, we forget that with a lot of the polygamous marriages that happen is that you were not told. You were not carried along. Nobody sat you down and gave you a, a uh, and gave you a rules of engagement or told you what is about to happen. You were betrayed into a polygamous marriage. You thought you and Mr. were doing your, you know, monogamy together. Mm. And one day you wake up, sometimes for some people it's even, even, it's even worse. You don't even know anything is happening until you open social media one day and then you see that your guy has traveled somewhere with somebody. <laughs> and then people will now turn to you and say, find your happiness. Mm. No, but auntie, allow me to feel hurt first and angry and betrayed. Talking <laughs> about finding my happiness. When we were building ourselves as one man and one woman and we're building and we're saying, you are my happiness, you are my... People do not know. All of a sudden, there's someone... Find your someone has, and you're telling Let me go on a quick break. I will find it, but first of all, can I deal with what I'm going through yeah, now? Let me and my 20th it. anniversary is such a big deal. Can I also deal with that? Please before? take yourself I mean, out. Exactly. Let me go on a break. When you come back, we'll wrap up on this. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing this matter, but we're wrapping up right now. Let's give you comments on social media. Do we have any? Queen Baku Gamer says, it takes a sensible woman to know to trend carefully because of the four children involved. Uh, said she lies. Messi even... If she lies, she wasn't Funshaw's friend. They know and talk to each other. This is wrong. Um, Uluwa Shewun says, Funshaw should just move on. If the man is not digging for you again, move on. Expect that Funshaw wants to be in the news too. So he's enjoying that. She's enjoying that. It's not easy though, but she has to. Okay, so um, so David says, please, quickly. Mm -hmm. Busy talking strong is not the same as being strong. Mm -hmm. You never know how you're going to deal with the situation until you like it. Oh, After true. crying and breaking all the things I want to break, I'll find my own happiness. That's mm. how I can. Mark Boy says, any company offering her and hobby that package advert uh, advertise it is an irresponsible organization. The mm. person that accepts the offer is equally irresponsible. Why? It's like getting two-faced to advertise condom or faithfulness. It will. Oh. Mm. Boy. <laughs> wow. Simon Molade says, blame not mercy. Your husband failed to fulfill his obligations as a polygamist. He should be careful in... Okay, as a polygamist, he should be careful 
in decision making also be considerate and not sentimental. Mm. BTG Home says, probably Funcho has been a witch all along. I don't blame Messi at all. Buhari um, said, Moraya, good morning. Second wives are habitually notice me type. It's not coincidental that they're having such when it's the first wife's wedding anniversary. They do I, this to tell the world it's my time. Mm. There's an angle I wanted to talk about. The angle of you. You know, I'm talking about you being the consolidator, yeah. bringing the two families together. There's that angle where you make enemies that are not parties to the marriage. So I don't believe children are parties to a marriage. I believe adults, individuals, are yeah. parties to a marriage. So you have come in, the man has children you, with his wife, and you have your own. And now the, you both don't have kids together. You don't want a situation where the maltreatment of the mother from your husband. Now, your own case is not the example Miriam gave. Your own is that you are marrying the man together are uh, noticed by the children. Mm -hmm. And while you're not waiting, noticing, you're earning enemies from his kids. They're waiting. So you see sometimes a man passes, there's so much bitterness from a set of children. You're wondering, is it you they did it to? Mm -hmm. Was their mother's battle? Or they chose to fight it? Depending on That's how it goes. That's looking deeper than so, what you see. a woman who is not with this mindset don't have business in polygamy. You have to have sense. It's not for the, I want to be happy. Uh, I don't care what. There's a thin line between finding your own happiness and being happy by yourself and selfishness. Mm. If it's in this arrangement. So if you are not in that space of mind, don't bother about it. Because you're going to person, gather baggage you mercy, don't need. Mercy also is wealthy on her own as a person. So it's not like she's dependent on him. It's usually women who are dependent on this man. That when things happen, maybe the man dies, they now fight over uh, the children who is biological, who has access, who doesn't have access. But the truth is that she's a successful person, he's successful, and they're coming no, together as you know. an no, 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 Number one, let's go pick from the things that we see. Mm -hmm. Talk with you know. Number one, Funcho says she builds that house with her husband. Mm -hmm. and mercy is married him into the house. You're a wealthy woman. Can say, okay, we don't want your things. Stay in your house. I've seen my, uh, polygamy where yeah. the man leaves the house for the and first moves wife. To the other and moves to the house. new wife's house. If yeah. you can, if you want to, pull, if you want rich. So this one, God forbid, there's a property struggle after inheritance. They will be dragging something. That's mm. my, my personal. Okay, we have to wrap up on this, but uh, I think really in a nutshell, I mean this. Today's Friday, Celebrity Thank Friday. So we like to this. We like to talk about celebrities and their gist mm -hmm. and their happenings. Yeah. But um, really, the truth is like. Polygamy, polygamy is a serious business. Yes. It's something where both parties, all the adults involved, must take it seriously. I know that all their actions or inactions communicate something and that can actually lead to good or to bad. So this conversation really is a, is a conversation to help others in this situation where you're the second wife, you're the first wife, you are dating somebody who is married, possibly there'll be marriage involved. Mm -hmm. Understanding that once there's, there are multiple parties in the marriage, it's a serious conversation to have to ensure that all parties have some sense of fairness and togetherness. But if it's a full divorcing of the first wife, which we are told uh -huh. that in this case, in Mercy's case, what we've, what, what we've heard is that the first wife is asking for divorce and they've been separated for a while. Mm. If that is the case, she's entitled to find love, or the man is entitled to find love elsewhere, and Mercy is entitled to her own happiness too. That's, that's, that, that, that's a separation. Yeah. When that, there is separation, there's marriage. I'm saying when that. There's when there's a divorce and, and they, wait, decree, let me, let me, let me, that means there's no marriage. When there's separation and there's a possibility of divorce, therefore, you, the new girlfriend or the new wife, mm -hmm. why should you be worried about the first wife's anniversary? As a single that's, girl, I had polygamists asking for my hand in marriage. Yeah, I turned, I had polygamists. Men who thought, you know, okay. it was okay for, to make me their second or third wife. I turned down most of them because of sensitivities like this. I was a very impatient girl. I would have been the first wife. I would so soak the man. So I don't want that kind of baggage in my life. I said no. And number two is I wanted to make another point of, you know, being careful <clears throat> to, get, to get into that arrangement. Mm. You don't want to be the one to say uh, 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 there's a divorce. If you're in a marriage and you're telling me, I'll divorce my wife, they go. Don't make me the reason for that divorce. Mm. Mm. I don't want to be that excuse. Yeah. And that's selfish women. Ask, yeah, you always it's what it was. It's what it is. No, some women don't mind. Some women will mm. see you that. I we have um, Go and leave your wife well, I think for me. Yeah, I people are chasing that. somebody that I know. They know he's married, mm. happily they're married. Him to yeah. break but they're just saying, marriage. I just want, just attach me. I just People. want that name. Okay. I have my own money. Just, yeah. just add me. Just, just help my kids. Okay, so just you, that know, woman. You know, there are things when we, when we discuss, um, I like to bring it home and bring it to our children because for us, that is when it's, it hits home. 
Um, and this conversation is not always about, yes, some people do it, some people don't do it. It's about what would we like to do? What would we like for our sisters to do? What would we like for our daughters to do? Would I want my daughter to be the one that says, I don't care that you're married, just attach yourself to me. Or would we want our daughter to be the one that is okay. sensitive to the other flight and decides, even if I'm going to attach myself to you, I hope this is a polygamy that is well discussed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's so why we have this conversation. Yes, like, I understand where what you're coming from. What we want is different from what will happen at the end of the day. You forget that people have their different personalities. Yeah. Yeah. People have or their different people traumas. People learn from people hearing have, conversations. Yes, if you mm -hmm. are interested in learning. Sometimes we've been drumming things into people's head. Be a kind human being. Be a merciful person. How many people have heard us? That's mm -hmm. the thing. So don't assume that they will do it that way for you to be better or be happy. Assume that it may not work out that way and find a way to make yourself whole. That's the point okay. I'm making I here. have to wrap up yeah. now. So let me, allow me to wrap up. <laughs> to wrap up what we have oh. found and I have confirmed is that a company actually took them on a vacation. But we're asking that there could have been a bit more sensitivity in, in seeing that the first wife's um, anniversary was coming. Maybe they could have postponed the trip. Either way, it wasn't like the man use his money to take his new wife the out on vacation. It was, it was a business trip and he went point. out He's together the and then the whole world is blaming him for <laughs> taking his wife over. I know you are wrapping up. That is I got to wrap up without him being go. there now. Okay, that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we have a guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sorry. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Our guest today is a politician, member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Ibrahim Obanikoro. To join the conversation, you can call us on 0812-705-3687. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for having me. So you have been a member of the House of Representatives three and a half years, uh, representing a TIOSA. Federal local cons. government in Lagos State. Federal constituency. Federal constituency. Um, tell us about the work so far, what you've done, um, and how, how, you've, how you've been able to influence um, lawmaking at the national level. Thank you for this um, opportunity. Um, it's been a journey, considering the fact that for about a year we had um, COVID uh, lockdown. We were unable to operate. And then with the mixture of COVID and NSAS, I think it was about a year and some months that um, out of the three years, three and a half years that we've been in office. But um, then again, it's been a learning curve because uh, National, National Assembly is a huge institution. You have 360 members. So at every given time, you are battling against 59 others trying to bring one infrastructure or development to your constituency, trying to pass any motion, trying to, sorry, trying to move any motion, trying mm. to pass any bill. Because your bills have to cut across. Motions are almost uh, uh, clear cut. They're almost like emergency. Okay, I have this emergency in my area. I can move a motion. Others don't necessarily have to go against it because you are dealing with a particular issue. But when it comes to presenting bills, that's when you have to make sure it cuts across that even though it's bringing joy to your constituency, it's not bringing pain to them in the north or in the southeast. So that's where you have to do a lot of politicking, a lot of tooking, to make sure that whatever bill you want to pass is going to sit well with others. Otherwise, do not see the light of um, a day in the National Assembly. Right. And that is why it, it takes a lot to move, I mean, to, uh, to pass a bill, to go from first reading, second reading, right. third reading, before it becomes an act. And it's a lot tougher if you are a first-timer um, coming from a place like Lagos, where you already have 24 members coming in. And so, and out of the 24, about 13 of them are highly respected um, ranking uh, members. So all these things are put into consideration before, you know, mm. um, they bring the touch right, to you that you're just coming right. for the first time. So that's how, that's what the journey has been so far. It's been a learning curve, it's been an experience, and it's, it's, it's been so worth it. Nigerians are faced with a situation right now that, you know, would like 
I would like that President Muhammad Buhari is my constituent, constituency representative, so I just go directly to it's you. One kilo, make you die. <laughs> so you are representing Etiosa. Imagine that you know your people have asked you to do something for them as a lawmaker. What's the limit that you have? Limitations that you have to solving this naira scarcity? How far can you go to represent and bring about change to ease the lives of your people as a lawmaker? So I think the House have done everything we can to try and ease the pain on Nigerians. I remember when the CBN um, representatives, that is all the deputy governors mm -hmm. and high-ranking members of the CBN, came to the National Assembly. I stood, up, I stood up and I asked them that, at your management decision, when you were deciding, how much did you decide to print? Let Nigerians know. But um, till date, I'm yet to figure out how much there. In same meeting, I mean, same uh, uh, sittings, I asked them, I said, your policy, what is going to do in the long run is that it's going to kill businesses, which is currently going on. And in the long run, what's going to happen is that banks are going to feel the need to reduce in size because customers are not coming mm -hmm. to the bank again. And what that automatic, uh, automatically means is that Downside. banks will be downsizing. They'll be mm -hmm. firing and you know, laying off people, which is going to contribute to unemployment. And they are yet to give us um, a solution to that. And just yesterday, the speaker was also faulting the federal government for not uh, abiding so by the... beyond faulting, what can you do? And that's all we can do. We are lobbyists. We lobby, we shout, mm. we cry, we mm. speak for you. And wow. he has been doing that on our behalf. And I've been doing that in my own little okay. space as well. Okay. Like, okay, this let's... hardship is too much. I had my hair cut this morning. I could not give my Baba 2,000 naira for babbing my hair. <laughs> wow. You know, that's how difficult the situation has been. Yeah. I had to transfer tio, uh, money to him. Yeah. Tio, sir. When we hear that, we just think wealthy people, well-educated, well-exposed. So those are the caliber of people that you'll be representing. But also we know that your constituency is yeah. like the two opposites in yes. that um, constituency. So how do you, and I need to add another thing is that when I hear that, I also remember you have quite a major contender for your office. Okay. And I'm wondering what your approach is because what he has, he has celebrity status, you know, and um, how do you think that would affect your re-election or your campaign for re-election? Well, it's just as a mixture of the masses, the middle class, and um, the rich. And, uh, they are spread across Ethiopia, but obviously there are more of the affluent in uh, consistency too. So you have Ikoi, Bi, and um, part of uh, Obalinde. Well, Obalinde will be part of the middle class and um, masses. And then when you now go, you have riverine area, where it's called island, island. That's Tapwa Bay, Abago, Ibuteoko, Ibutefun, Okwata, about seven villages of that stretch that don't even have electricity you know, so that they power themselves with um generator how do i deal with them because i've known them practically almost all my life i've been part and parcel of the affluent and i've been part and parcel of the middle class and um the masses as well so it's easier for me to relate with them and if you come to it yourself you would see that uh, the way i relate with them the way we talk the way we chat mm -hmm. hang out is a lot different there is you is they find peace in me, and I also find um, peace in them. And like I always tell um, everybody that cares to listen, and popular does not win election anywhere in the world. It takes more than to be popular to win election. So, and politics and uh, stardom and celebrity are two opposite. Um, really? That's, yes, that's interesting. There are two opposite uh, ends. When you talk politics, you're dealing with uh, reality. You're dealing with people with different emotions. You're dealing with different interests. You're dealing with different ideas. Mm. When you come to celebrity, all you're doing is trying to make believe. You know, what's not, uh, you're trying to make what's not real real on TV. Mm. You're trying to set a uh, pace. You know, so it's completely different. Your interests right. are aligned. You just want to make, uh, you just want to make money. That's okay, what you, you do. You're accusing celebrities now. No, I'm not, no, I'm not accusing. No, 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 I'm not accusing. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> accusing them. Yet. I'm not accusing I'm just them. Kidding. I'm just so, saying that yeah. there are two you different. Uh, Let me get a few questions. Two different aspects of life, you know. So I stay in Etiosa. Thank you. And last week I got when a call. Um, Ikati. Ikati. Uh, last week I got a call. Somebody called me and was asking me. Um, so I, I'm like, how did you get my number? They wanted me to vote for your contender, and they were speaking. A young lady speaking to me about it. I'm like. 
How did you get my number? So we have the data of everybody who registered on that ETIOSA, and it was quite impressive. And she wanted me to promise that she has my votes for that day. Mm. But um, I had to start asking her other questions. What do you think you can do for people of ETIOSA? We have peculiar uh, problems in the sense that we have a lot of uh, young people who are not doing anything, who are always on the roads. Mm -hmm. They will try and act like they are helping you solve the issues of traffic, but then they are trying to extort you. We have a lot of beggars on that axis. I'd like to know what you intend to do for uh, us since we are in that environment and how you can solve those issues for us if you get in to see if I would vote for you. That, that is, um, <laughs> that is uh, primarily the duty of the executive um, of government. And I know that um, in our last conversation with the governor, they are building a facility where they want to move this um, uh, kid, especially the kids. The grown-up ones have been there for a long time. They're extremely evasive. They're very, very evasive. And there's actually, from, from investigation, there is an anchor man that, you know, brings all of them there, tells them what, there is, there's, there's like a cartel, a cartel. Mm. you know, that brings them together, mm -hmm. strategically places them where to go and where to be. And there's also an informant that informs them when the MOE is coming. You see that all of them will disperse and you can't um, see them. But the, we are, the, I know that I have, we've had this conversation with uh, our candidate, the gubernatorial candidate for Lagos State, Governor Sonwulu. And that there's a facility being put in place so that the ones we are able to get hold of, they will take them there for rehabilitation and education you, and what have you. You implied earlier that um, being a first-timer in the National Assembly, it could have been, was, was a bit of a challenge, especially because those of you 24 that came in, 13 of you were well-known, and you were just trying to understand. So in a nutshell, you probably didn't get a lot of work done, as I would have liked, because you're a first-timer. So why do you think we should vote for you again? On the contrary to that, and that's why I laid emphasis on the amount of time we've had to operate, just yeah. about two years and uh, some months. And in that two years and some months, I've been able to move four bills, Going, that have gone through first reading. Yeah. Oh. I've been able to move mm. about eight motions that tackled emergency situations such as um, the barracks innovation, because our barracks are a complete eyesore, especially the police one. Um, we have ocean surge issues in areas like Okwafa, Okumoko, Okwaja, you know, that the federal government needs to come and help us because the, the erosion is more, is a lot stronger than uh, it used to be. So we need help for that. I moved the motion that all the abandoned aircraft, as far back as Nigerian Airways, that are on our... Still there, yeah, yeah drive past it. All those um, aircraft need to be evacuated. evacuated. I've moved a motion to tackle the issue of nurses that are always treating patients. So um, help me understand, when you manner. move these motions, what are the next steps? It's like, is it just being it to, to the house and then nothing happens? Once you move it, it goes to the committee stage. And then the committee now starts relating with the necessary agencies mm -hmm. and ministries okay. to make sure they bring... Uh, there a timeline to when it's delivered, so, they, so I can the, drive down that ETIOS and say, these the, airplanes are the, No, not ETIOS, it's at the airport. The, the airport, airport, okay. Yeah. That one, they're actually working on it. One of the issues we are having now is that there is litigation on some, some of the crafts. Okay. So that's one of the issues why they are stalling on that one. <laughs> and then in this short period as well, I've been able to facilitate about eight roads. Um, and if, you know, Lekki Akwe Express is heavily populated. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's taking more than it can handle. So some of the inner roads, I've been able to bring the federal government to help us... Um, rehabilitate it so that if you don't have to get on Lekki Express, you don't have to. Just stay in your locality, do what you have to do, and um, go back home. We've been able to facilitate two different clinics in Lafayette IG area. One okay. is fully equipped. We're in the process of handing over to the local government now so that it can start um, operations. During the campaign of 2019, when I went around, we realized that majority of the students in constituency one come to constituency two to do education. So one of the first things I did was that I was going to provide a free school bus to alleviate the pains of pockets of the parents, to also give them safety, because mm -hmm. you have kids jumping from one bus to the other. So they're in just one bus, takes them from constituency one to two in the morning, and takes them back wow. in the afternoon. Nice. And over time, uh, we've been able to facilitate four different, um, in four different schools, additional classrooms, so that at the end of the day, these schools can take in more students so the long-term goal is that it will reduce the amount of students leaving constituency one, coming to constituency mm. two. So everybody will stay in their locality mm. to um, get their right. education. We have done a lot of empowerment. Our petty traders have given them cash to petty cash grants. Not me as a person. I mean, through 
the federal government. government. Even me as a person, I've done it as well in numerous occasions, mm -hmm. whereby you increase your market. At the end of the day, what your take home is, it should be what, more than what it used to be. We've done that for a few petty traders. And for artisans as well, we send them for training. And after training, we'll give you tools just to go and better yourself and increase your your take home okay. um, okay. profits. And you're and saying you did this all, all, all this short period. Yeah. And some elderly parents, a particular man, he was the one that actually started this with me. He just wrote a letter to my office. I've never seen him in my life. He just wrote a letter to my office. He has not been getting his pension. He's been retired for about 15, 10 years. Oh. So I took it up upon myself. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, going through Pitard and Pencom. And eventually he started getting his um his pension. He got all his arrears paid and then his monthly started coming in. Wow. And I didn't know that until he came to my office one day. Elderly man, frustrated. I was taken aback. I was scared. <laughs> Baba, I quickly jumped up and carried him on that. Ah, what can be the problem? That I hope I will be able to solve it. He said, No, I've solved it. That he brought a letter that he didn't even think about. He just said, Let me just, you know, right. see if this would um work. In my language, in his language, he said, you je. Yeah, and then I, um, right. tried my luck. I tried my luck, and yeah. I made it happen for him. And after that, I've been able to help one or two others in the same situation. So that's some of the things that I've been able to achieve in the last um, two, three months that I've actually had to Work. operate. And okay. you know, we have a lot of estates. I don't think there's any other constituency in Nigeria that has the amount of private estates we have in Ethiopia. Mm. Yeah. We, we have no, about no, no, 200 no. private estates in mm. Ethiopia, and I've been able to cater for all, not all of them, but at least as many That's that possible. I could. I have done that in terms of okay. contributing to them, rehabilitating their roads, in terms of giving them fire extinguishers because fire is real, in terms of giving them okay. uh, solar street lights to eliminate dark spots in their okay. estate, mm -hmm. security at night, and so many other so uh, um, I things like that. have someone who knew you back in the days and he talks about how your personality is very friendly, you are a people's person back when you guys were much younger, and I'm wondering how has this been a factor to in your political career? That, that's one of the things that I was saying, that it comes to me easy, because it's just who I am. I just like being friendly. I like raising a finger to yeah, help But in anybody. politics, there's a line. Some people are elites. Mm -hmm. They cannot dissent inside the masses. And some people are the people. People, those who you call man of the regular, people. they sit down. It's just, for some, he's only doing elections. They eat corn. No, I, mean, I, mean, I am you know? a man of the yeah, people. I find, like How? I said, I find peace in them. They find peace in me. Mm. We play ball together every Sunday. I usually play ball until now that I'm because of campaign, and I'm mm. sure immediately after campaign, I'm going to go back to sense. playing my football every Sunday. I find time to go and hang out with the boys once in a while on a Friday or Saturday night. So I'm still, we, every party we go, we go together. It's still the same. That's why sometimes so on my status, I always put it there. Same on me. If mm. there's anything changing, it's you. If, you. if you have me on my, if you have my contact, you say once in a while, if you go back to that genuine song, same on me, I always put it up on my, on my status all the time that I'm still the same IBO that you used to know. Nothing has changed. Yeah, what's the IBO? That's my acronym. Ibrahim Babajide. Of oh, okay. So okay, that's fine. I always tell my parents that I think I was born for, for yes. this. Yes. <laughs> so how have you, um, I want the strength of your campaign team. Uh, like she mentioned, you're contending with someone who is popular, who may attract a lot of sympathy because we know him and he serenades us with his music. <laughs> okay, let's see what would happen if this person gets some position. So how grounded are you? What are some of the things that you're putting in place to ensure that a lot of people come out and support you to get re-elected again. How grounded am I? Well, let's take back 2011. I've been contesting for elections since 2011. I was at the age of 29. When I started campaign at the age of 28, ran into election at the age of 29. I have realized that some of us have to be, it's not all of us that would be in 9 to 5. It's not all of us that would be in entertainment. Some of us have to dedicate ourselves to making Finish. sure that we try and drive our country in the direction at which we wanted to go. And I've been doing that since 2011. Consistently and constantly, I've contested. When I was in the PDP, I contested for assembly, chairmanship, assembly, twice in 2015, sorry, 2011, and once in 2015. And my elections were keenly contested. One of them, as far as winning the election, going as far as um, tribunal to appeal. That's how grounded I can be. I've 
had my own structure before joining the APC. And if you know very well, the APC is a well-grounded party in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. and coupled with a grounded candidate, it will take a mountain. <laughs> Let's talk about your candidates. To, um, to, move the, to move the two, to take a mountain. Okay, so the Obani Koro name. Yes. Of course, when I first said it, I was expecting a much older person. So, um, not being Lagosian, I guess it's a political family, political name. And how would you say that has influenced you and also helped you in your political career? No, your dad's, your Obani dad's Koro, work, how much Obani of it? Koro is a royal family in Lagos State. We are okay. part of the White Cap Chiefs. Okay. And then there's a popular... Banikoro bus stop in Pagroof area. Mm. Where and there's also, also your dad. Hey, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving, you I'm giving you okay. uh, why you know Banikoro is you know resonates a lot with people. Mm -hmm. I've had people look at me and say, "Ah, I've been hearing your name since I've been primary school." <laughs> yes. Say yes, sir. That's my father, sir. <laughs> 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 then I've had people accuse me, "Oh, you did this when you were a chairman. You did that when you were a chairman." I'm, like, I'm sorry, sir. It's not me. It's my father. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, my dad is a. Um, Politician, arguably one of the most successful politicians from um, Lagos State. It's um, it's a huge shoe to fill, and I don't think I'm feeling it uh, <laughs> properly yet. But I'm sure that over time, I think I'm capable to be able to fill it. But yes, he was once a local government chairman, once a senator, once a commissioner, once minister, once ambassador in Lagos State, and he obviously himself and his friends, um, most especially. The late Ambassador Adimola Seriki may so um, continue to rest in peace. What's your relationship with um, Ashiraj Bolamitinu and he's running for presidency? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, it's, it's joyous for me, for me to be able to have the president of Nigeria's phone on my um, number on my phone, <laughs> and then I can actually call him and I'm 110% sure that he will pick my call. And if he doesn't, that I can actually go to the villa and say, ah, Daddy, I'm calling you. And I think that's um, something I'm ready to work with. It is bringing so much joy to me because I know that for a fact I'm going to bring a lot of development to Ethiopia by through that relationship. Through that relationship. Well, well, knowing him that closely, how would you describe him? Um, very intelligent man. Is is what what actually attracts me a lot to him is is um, he's a very good orator. He can he, and he sees a lot. You know, he can if he tells you. If you have a decent conversation with him, because it's kind of tough to have a decent conversation with him because he's always having, like, everybody, his attention is always divided. But he still has that ability to say, okay, when I was with IBO last, this was our conversation. It will continue from there. So that attracts me to him a lot, his ability to just pick up and detail this conversation right. from where you guys are. And the Lagos State Governor? Oh, Mr. Selebu. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Well, what's how's your relationship with him? Very good, very good. And do you think he should be re-elected? I, I, I have no iota of doubt that he should be re-elected. All right, so we have to wrap up with you very soon. Um, Etiosa, as has been said earlier, is a very important um, area in mm -hmm. the state. And um, you've shared with us what you've done so far and, and how you've been able to impact the lives of many people. They are watching you right now, and they're saying, hmm, in this hour, it is our now. Before we might not have options because we don't know them. Mm. Now we have options. We know them now. We know who these people are. Tell them why you must be selected over the others. I mean, you said a lot already, but there's got to be something that also hooks us more than it will, that when they hear the other people speaking concerning. First of all, they've always had options. They've yeah, but always, we didn't know the options. They've always, we've always, like I said, you know the option, the other option because, and don't forget, this particular option was also on the card. Last, last time, time yes. election, yes. you know. So the options are already there. We've always had options in the previous election. In fact, I even think that, like I said, the previous candidate is a grassrooter. And when you are dealing with a grassrooter, it's a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. man, because the previous candidate, uh, Bakari, Tony Bakari, he resonates with the grassroots as well. So mm -hmm. that's a lot tougher mm -hmm. than when you are dealing with somebody that does not connect with mm -hmm. the uh, cons constituency that is, that is claiming to be. You say you're from Obalinde, but your family house is in Moloni. Moloni is in two places in, in, in Lagos State, either in Lagos Island or Ibutemeta, not um, Obalinde. So those are issue, uh, signs to let you know that mm. he does not resonate with Etiosa. He doesn't understand Etiosa. But I have lived in Etiosa half of my life. I'm 41, going to be 42 today. I have served Etiosa. 
I mean, sorry, I mean, going to be 42 in this, year. this year at some point, <laughs> June 30th, by the grace of um, God. I've lived in Etiosa after that time. I've dedicated my time to Etiosa. Like I said, I've been fighting for Etiosa since 2010, that I've been saying we want a better Etiosa. I contested for House of Assembly. I contested for chairmanship because I wanted something better for oh, Etiosa. Yeah. And eventually, I'm here trying to make sure that I make better for Etiosa. And that's why we are always available for all class. We are on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we have a running website, I have a constituency office where everybody can People always... People have not called me, Sha. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, okay. that also depends on... We have over 400,000 yep. voters in Etiosa. Mm -hmm. We cannot call all 400,000. And our, with the bracket, we are, do is from the same bracket, but we can be pulling from different blocks. So the block I am pulling from might be different from the block he is pulling. Um, right. So we have some tweets. We have some tweets. Yes. Buhari, um, Buhari well, Kwam Oladimeji says that Mr. Obani Koro, listening to you today has changed my view about you. I'm able to see the confidence and seriousness in you towards your people. Keep it up. Okay, Honorable Father Adami says, my neighbor, Jide Koro, is on your view. His office is always open. I have never seen him with security details. Friendly, of uh -huh. course. The only issue is that people say to Koshaw, is that people say Kosho because he doesn't give money. Um, Rola Kehos is Nigeria. <laughs> does not give money. Nigeria is the, no cash. the country where political positions are passed from one generation to another of the same family, while the slaves and sacrifices go to religious houses to pay. What do you have to say about, you know, this? Someone that may think that like it was given to you. you know, it was given to you because It's all of your over profession. If, you, if, a, if a man is a doctor, the likelihood of two or one of his ch uh, kids being mm -hmm. a doctor is extremely high. If a musician, the likelihood of one or two of your kids being a musician is very high. So it's, it's all so over you, the world. You, you understudied your day. Yes. I don't yeah. see any. In right. the U.S., the Clintons are political to family. Ask. The Kerrys, you, you know, the Bushes. Yeah. Yeah. They're That's all, true. you know. It, it's, it's, yes. uh, we have to wrap up, but I just cannot let you leave this table without asking if it's possible for you to hold our president for the statements he made yesterday. Concerning the Naira notes, can, what can the National Overruling Assembly the, do? The, the, the yes, case. especially because there's a Supreme Court judgment. Uh, that, that, that's it. I, I, I found and the third arm of you're one of the second, you're one of the third, yes, third arms of government. I think the speaker came out yesterday to condemn it, and I am of I'm a strong um, uh, opinion of that as well. The Supreme Court should be the only first uh, arm of government to intervene in matters as such, and they and have done fight. that. And um, and the law says that all arm of government are equal. You're, we just have different jurisdictions. You as we execute, they make the law, and we pass the law. And if mm -hmm. they've made the law, and the law of the land is the law of the land, nobody is above right. the law of the land. We need to wrap up. That's all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for, for having joining me. us today. Thank you, Thank you for having Wish me. Wish you all the best. Thank you. In coming elections. Thank you. Okay, today is the D Day, the ladies hangout. You have a free ticket, so we can come and plenty, plenty. let's all be yes, right to you. Want political yeah. people. No, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if he's coming, he has to buy his ticket. Who's yeah. No, of course, giving you a free ticket. Yeah. Anyways, today's our Valentine yeah. hangout. Let's yeah. not bring any political people, please. It's not a political event. Jesus He's Christ. just hanging out with the ladies, you know, families. You know, anybody thinking that we are, you know, that's this. But thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, that's all we can take on this show. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now. <laughs>